What to Emma Goldman, Teddy Roosevelt, Henry David Thoreau, and Gina Seeple all have in common? The answer is, they're all boy mechanics. The Boy Mechanic Project began when I encountered this 1915 book, published by the editors of Popular Mechanics magazine. The projects outlined in the book are extremely diverse, forming a highly practical kit for life in 1915. Like Horatio Alger's Rags to Riches novels from roughly the same era, the boy mechanics served to instill ingenuity and self-reliance in boys. I began to wonder, what place, if any, does self-reliance have in today's world? Who will I become if I attempt to build all these projects? Will it work? Will I become a self-reliant American boy ready to build Teddy Roosevelt's America? Or will I become something entirely different? Technical details in the book are notably sparse. Upon closer examination, the drawings reveal themselves to be fantastical illustrations rather than buildable plans. For instance, after looking closely, I realized that as drawn, the portable folding boat would not float, fold, or be portable. What is, what's in there? It's a boat. When I open it up, it is a boat. Oh, yeah. It's a funny boat, but it is a boat, yeah. It knocked me in the lake. How about if I go like this? Thank you. Oh, oh there's a lot of mud in there. The boat was ceremoniously launched at Walden Pond in Concord, Massachusetts in commemoration of the 162nd, uh -oh. three-month, and two-week anniversary of the completion of Thoreau's cabin at the same site. As the boy mechanic drifted across Walden Pond in the portable folding boat, echoes could be heard of Thoreau, Roosevelt, Goldman, and other famously self-reliant American heroes. They would if I if I shimmed, I mean the the orlock itself or the, no, the base. The lock, yeah. Then I would have to take it in and out every time because if it's up high, it won't close because this folds here. So, so. But what about having a piece built out so they come up inside? That's they come up more inside so it can still close. Yeah, and then that way you would. wouldn't be. You wouldn't. <coughs> so how come you took off the life uh, vest? Well, yeah. How come I was a little cocky, Gina. You know? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, it was a little, um, it's very overcrowded in this area. <laughs> Between me and the oars, which are clunky, and these partitions and this poofy life vest made it almost impossible to prevent myself from hitting my hands against this jagged thing. So that's why. How does the boy mechanic use non-rolling thread spools to help Emma Goldman work towards liberation of the proletariat? Can the webfoot attachments for swimmers help the boy mechanic live up to Teddy Roosevelt's ideal of a strenuous life? Find out answers to these questions and more in the continued tales of the boy mechanic.